So friends, a very good evening to one and all. I am highly indebted to Sarva Vidyalaya Kelavani Mandal Kadi, Kadi Sarva Vishwavidyalaya, the host Pramukh Swami Science and HD Patel Arts College and Dibham Foundation for providing me this platform to share something that is interest. Friends, since last 35 days, we all are in lockdown with tremendous news coming from all the sides. Let me make you a little bit lighter. On a lighter note, I have written over here, looking London, talking Tokyo. But look towards London, we are not going to make any calls to Tokyo, but I am going to integrate this topic very well with something in science. Friends, when I tried of thinking for a topic that is a little lucrative, I decided to talk with this title, Looking London, Talking Tokyo. I am going to discuss something that is coined as serendipity in science. And when we come across this word serendipity in science, it is something newer in the terms of terminology. And especially in India, still we are not that much aware of this term serendipity. So first of all, let me make clear what is serendipity in three very simple languages. Serendipity is a happy and an unexpected event that apparently occurs due to a chance and often appears when we are searching for something else. Akasmik lab ho jata hai. Akasmik or akasmat se kuch khoj kar de. If we say it in Gujarati, achanak sundar ke rasprad vanao bane ke te sundar shodh karwani ek pratibha tamara ma jage. Anek shada sabdo ma kau to jeri te Ramujma, me kidutu, looking London, talking Tokyo. We can also use the word Janatha Japan Ojge Chin. But we won't move here and there. We will stick to science. We will stick to serendipity. And all the people who are listening over here, science means does not science and mathematics. But I promise that I am going to discuss with you very interesting facts that has happened in science. From the title, you might have understood that. Akasmik lab ke baare mein, mein baat karne wala. So, in science, serendipity is a delight when it happens in our daily lives and has responsible for many innovations and important advance in science and technology. What and from where did serendipity origin? Serendipity was first used by Sir Walpole in 54. Sir Walpole was an English writer and a historian. He was impressed by a story that he had read called The Three Princes of Serendip. Serendip is an old name for a country known today as Sri Lanka. So the story was described how three girls were traveling, three princes were traveling and they repeatedly came across discoveries which they were not tend to. Matlab, aap khojna kuch aur chate the aur aapne kuch aur hi khoj liya. So, Seeing this story and getting highly impressed by the story, Sir Horace Walpole came up with a new terminology in this world and that was called serendipity. Serendipity in science. It may seem odd to refer a chance when discussing science. When you science about science, when you talk about science, then you say that you can just be able to find a chance from the moment, it will be wrong. But, you can see that मैं आपके सामने तकरीबन 25 से 30 ऐसी बातें रखूंगा जिसके बाद आप कुछ ना कुछ जरूर सोचेंगे कि ये सरेंडिपिटी क्या है साइंटिफिक रिसर्च सपोजली ऑपरेट्स इन अ वेरी मेथोडिकल प्रिसाइज एंड कंट्रोल्ड वे विथ नो रूम ऑफ चांस इन एनी एरिया ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी और इन्वेस्टिगेशन इनफैक्ट चांस प्लेज एन इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी एंड हैज बीन रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर सम सिग्निफिकेंट डिस्कवरीज इन द पास्ट and I am going to make you aware and make you discuss some of such discoveries that has happened in the past. Let us start. Aapke saamne jab ye maashay ka naam aata hai, Alexander Fleming. Aur yadi mein aapse poochu, what was the discover or invention he did accidentally? Aap seedha hi bol doge penicillin. Kyunki hume yehi pahle se bataya gaya, yehi pahle se dikhaya gaya. But if your answer is penicillin, you would be surprised to know. The total credit of penicillin goes to Sir Alexander Fleming, but it was not his first discovery. His 
first discovery was lysosome. Lysosome is an enzyme that is present in the mucus, saliva and tears. Fleming found that when we sneeze, हम जब चींक खाते हैं, Fleming found the enzyme after he sneezed or dropped nasal mucus on the paltry dish full of bacteria. He noticed that some of the bacteria died when the mucus had contaminated the dish. So it was something very similar to penicillin, but this happened before penicillin. So the credit of penicillin goes to Alexander Fleming. Similarly, the credit of lysosome also goes to penicillin. Sorry, Alexander Fleming. But it was an accidental discovery. वो खोजना नहीं चाहते थे, कुछ और कर रहे थे और उनको ये मिल गया। कैसे पता चला? Fleming discovered that the mucus contained a protein that was responsible for the destruction of bacterial cells. He named this protein lysosome. Moving further, sucralose. आप जानते हैं, it's a sweet material. It's a sweet chemical rather to say. In 75, scientists Tate and Lyle, sugar company and scientists at the King's College of London were working together. They wanted to find a way to use this unknown material which later was known as sugar as an intermediate substance in some chemical reactions. And they were not at all related to it as a sweetener. Shashikant Fadnis was a graduate student that time helping this project. By his mentor, he was told to test some chlorinated sugar being prepared as a possible insecticide. But rather than testing, he tasted it. He placed a little bit of that chemical on his tongue and found that it was extremely sweet. He placed a little bit of the chemical on his tongue and he found that it was extremely sweet. He was supposed to test it for something else as an intermediate. Janata Japan, Chin. This was how sucralose came into existence and it is now used as an excellent sweetener in the food industry. Friends, cisplatin. If you belong to science, you might have heard of this anti-cancer drug that came up in 1960. But it was 100 years after its discovery that people could know that it is that cisplatin, an anti-cancer drug. Before 100 years, somewhere around in 1844, a scientist, Michael Perron, discovered it. But he could not discover it as an anti-cancer drug. He used it for some other purpose in chemistry. But after exactly more than 100 years of long time, scientists who had no idea that the chemical could act as a drug and fight as a cancer, researchers at the Michigan State University made an exciting and a serendipitous discovery. So this is what serendipitous is. अचानक से आपको कुछ ऐसा मिल जाए जो इस विश्व को एक नई ऊंचाई पे ले जाए। It takes the world to a newer horizon. Cisplatin, a team led by Dr. Barn Rosenberg, wanted to discover if an electric current affects the growth of the cells, the bacterial cells. They placed the bacterium Escherichia coli in a nutrient solution and applied current with the help of platinum electrodes. You know platinum are inert and they do not react chemically or biochemically with the bacteria. But see what happened over here. It wouldn't influence the result of the experiment. To their surprise, the researcher found that some bacterial cells died, other grew up to 300 times. Being curious, the team investigated further. They discovered that it wasn't the color itself, sorry, the current itself that was increasing the length of the bacterial cell as might have been expected. The cause was actually the chemical compound cisplatin which was inside there. So another serendipity, discovery of cisplatin. Cisplatin has one more serendipity. It is used as a chemotherapy drug. I would request you, I would rather urge you to make your eye on the dates. If you see, it started in 1960, then 1844, and in 78, it had another use. So, ek hi cheez, bar bar yadi aap usko dekhe, to aap ko uska naya nazariya, alag nazariya dikhega, jo shayad vishnu ko kaam lag jaye. Excellence. In 1895, German physicist Ranjan was working with a cathode ray tube. He was not trying to work or find X-rays. The tube was covered, but a fluorescent screen nearby would glow still when the tube was on and the room was dark. The rays were illuminating the screen. 
So what he did, he tried to block them with his hands so that his experiment could work properly. But as soon as he blocked with his hand, he noticed that he could see his bones in the image projected on the screen. This was how X-rays came into existence. And today you know how important are X-rays. Microwave oven was also one of such discovery. I would urge you that I will keep on speaking. If you like, you can listen and even read through. So it does not like to read, they can listen to me. I'll be going with the talk. The microwave oven experiment. A scientist, Spencer, was involved in testing the output of magnetons. But during the time, he was having a candy in his hand and he just put the candy near to the instrument. He saw that the candy bar melted. Now the curiosity started. Why the candy bar melted? He wondered if emissions from the magneton were responsible for this change. So he placed some uncooked popcorns or kernels next to the magneton and watched they started popping up. He next experiment involved placing an uncooked egg near the magneton. The egg heated up, cooked and exploded. So microwave oven was in the world through the hands of Prasen Spencer. Smart dust, a very innovative thing. Chemistry graduate Jamie Link was working on a silicon chip at the California in the San Diego. The chip shattered, but as it turned out, it was a disaster. No, it was not a disaster. Chip broke and small, small pieces happened. But his supervisor discovered that tiny bits of the chip were still sending signals, operating as tiny sensors. So this is how when a big sense sensor breaks and becomes a powder type of thing or tiny materials, it should stop functioning. But the sensors were still working. They called the self-assembling particles smart dust. You can see small chips placed on a coin. So this is how small chips known as smart dust came into existence. Friends, all these data are collected from web. I am here to make you aware and to get you interested in such areas of learning and reading which can help you to gain knowledge about serendipity. Aspartame, another chemical was an accidentally discovered or rather to say serendipitous. In 65, a chemist named James Schlatter was working for the GD Cereal company. He was trying to create new drugs to treat stomach ulcers. As a part of his study, he needed to make chemical consisting of four amino acids. So he joined them together. Today, this chemical is known as aspartame, but he was not knowing it at that time. For him, it was simply a chemical. Once Schlatter has made this intermediate chemical and he accidentally got some of it on his hands. When he licked on his fingers before picking up a piece of paper, he was surprised to notice a sweet taste on his skin. Eventually, he realized the cause of the taste and aspartame's future as a sweetener was secured now. Velcro. Velcro is also such an accidental or rather to say a serendipitous invention. On a particular hiking trip, an engineer found burrs clinging to his pants. There were small, small shrubs. They were sticking to his shirt, to his pant, to his bag and even they stuck onto his dog's fur. On closer inspection, he found that the bird's hooks would cling to anything in a loop shape. If he could only artificially recreate these loops, he might be on to something very new. And yes, he did it. He came up with the idea of Velcro. The result was Velcro, a combination of the words velvet and crochet. The material had troubling gaining traction in the fashion industry, but one of its most notable client was NASA. NASA used it even in its space expeditions to an extent. Teflon. As we all know, DuPont Co. was the best company and the inventor of Teflon. In 38, Plunkett with DuPont was working on the ways to make refrigerators more home friendly because they used to throw out some smell, ammonia, sulfur dioxide, propane, etc. So, after opening the container on a particular sample he had been developing, Plunkett found his experimental gas was gone. All that was left was a strange slippery resin, but that was resistance to extreme heat and chemicals. In 40s, the material was used in the Manhattan Project. A decade later, you see, 
he was working in 38 in 40 it was used somewhere else and after a decay it was found its way into an automotive industry but in the late 60s that teflon would be used for its most noted application nonstick so you don't know what will happen to your work to your research you start in 38 and you start gaining it as a social service in 60s coca cola this is a popular brand as you all know the inventor of coca cola wasn't a shrewd businessman a seller of sweet or a dream looking to strike it rich in the beverages business john pemberton just wanted to cure headache and a pharmacist by profession pemberton used two ingredients with the hope that his headache would cure coca leaves and cola nuts when his lab assistant accidentally mixed the two with carbonated water the world's first coke was out over the years coke would tinker with the now secret recipe but sadly pemberton died 2 years later and never saw his simple mixture giving birth to a soft drink saccharin was also an accidental discovery you can see over here the discovery of saccharin is credited to falberg he was working with coal tar and its derivatives in the era ramson's chemistry lab at the john hopkins university one day he was working late and forgot to wash his hands before eating supper he was amazed when he found that his bread tasted extremely sweet and this was the point when he got struck falberg realized that the chemical which he had been using in the lab had contaminated and sweetened the bread he returned to the lab to find the source of the sweetness his tests involved tasting different chemicals which was very risky pursuit falberg discovered the benzoic sulfamide responsible for the sweet taste this chemical eventually becomes known as saccharin viagra if you discuss viagra it is one of the flagship product of pfizer and has a very interesting story angina pectoris is a fancy name of a chest pain specifically spasms in the heart's coronary arteries the pharmaceutical company pfizer developed a pill named uk92480 to help constrict these arteries to relieve pain the pill failed its primary purpose but the secondary side effect was startling the drug became known as viagra and you know what it does that's a different business pfizer sold dollar 288 million worth of this little blue pill in the first quarter of 2013 so this is how you don't know what will happen to the things you are doing bakelite belgian chemist bakelite was trying to find a replacement of shellac that's an expensive resin secreted by the south asian beetle when instead he produced the world's first plastic by combining formaldehyde and phenol which is a waste product of coal tar and mixing it with other materials Bakeland accidentally, serendipitously created a non-conductive, heat-resistant polymer that is used in pretty much everything you see around me right now. A paragon of modesty, he named the plastic Bakelite in the honor of himself. Pacemakers, popular nowadays. Next up is the pacemaker invented by Wilson, who was working on an oscillator to record heart sounds in the late 50s. When he accidentally installed the wrong resistor, the device started giving off a rhythmic electrical pulse and this realized him that he could use this to regulate a human heart and that's handy since pacemaker at a time were the size of a television set and you know they are helping us to survive now. Matchstick was also a serendipitous, serendipitous discovery. In 27, John Walker was stirring a pot of chemicals that included antimony sulfide and potassium chlorate and then he noticed this dried lump at the end of his mixing stick. Now he tried to scratch it off but it burst into flames and the world had its first prototype of a strikeable matchstick. Gunpowder. Chinese accidentally invented gunpowder while trying to make immortality poison. If you see over here, 9th century Chinese alchemist made an explosive discovery in the quest to find an elixir for external life. They found out a hard way that mixing pepper, sulfur and charcoal is not a recipe for immortality. It makes gunpowder. Synthetic dye, a very wonderful experiment. 
in 56 in the 1800s a teenage chemistry student Perkin was attempting to create an artificial quinine to treat malaria now it was unsuccessful but over the course of his experimenting with the tree bark and coal tar he discovered a new color in the residue and it was coined as mauve Perkin isolated the color and would go on to create the world's first synthetic dye a purple color Super glue, as we all know, is an accidental discovery. Kodak engineer Harry Cover was working with chemicals known as cyanoacrylates during the World War II in an attempt to make clear plastic for gun sights when his team instead discovered what today is known as super glue. So you see, you are looking towards a plastic for gun sights that is London and you came up with Tokyo that is a total different thing. The slinky. In your childhood, you might have witnessed or played with this tool. In 43, naval engineer Richard James was working with tension springs to create a meter for the horsepower of nacelle vessels. When he accidentally knocked one of these springs over, he noticed that it kept moving after it hit with the ground and the idea for a new toy was born. The slinky. Conflicts. You all eat. While experimenting with cereal recipes in 95, when Keth Kellogg forgot about some boiled wheat, he left sitting out. The wheat became flaky, but Kellogg and his brother cooked it anyway. The resulting crunchy and flaky material became a cereal you may have heard of, cornflakes. Past and future. There are many more examples of serendipity in science. Some researchers estimate that up to 50% of scientific discoveries are serendipitous. Others think that the percentage might be even higher. It can be exciting when a researcher realizes that what at first sight seemed like an error may actually be an advantage. There may be a great practical benefit to the discovery that is made. Some of our most important advances in science have been serendipitous. It's very likely that in future, there will be more important discoveries than invention due to serendipity. Friends, before we move further, I will just take another example closely related to serendipity and not exactly serendipity. Today, in the area of drugs and medicinal chemistry, which has become most important because of COVID-19, you might have heard that scientists around the world and pharma companies around the globe are trying to test a drug which is used for one purpose to cure COVID, that is another purpose. So it's something which I am talking about. Serendipitous, but it is not serendipitous. It is a repurposing. In the terms of science, we should call it repurposing. But when we repurpose, when we need it, when the threat comes, we repurpose. Without the threat, we do not think of repurposing. But if we start thinking of repurposing in a right direction, the word serendipity will shrink and repurposing will increase. So, moving ahead, is it merely serendipity? Alone serendipity can work. Every time you leave something in your lab, you go next day, you check it. Oh, I discovered something else. No, it's a rubbish. For being a beneficiary of serendipitous discovery and inventions, you should have the background knowledge in the area where you are working. You should even have patience in research. You should be a keen observer. If Sir Fleming did not do the keen observation of the paltry left overnight, penicillin might not have come to it. An inquisitive mind. We all know the apple came down. But if the Honorable Sir did not have the ability of this inquisitiveness, then what about gravity? Creative thinking. This is one of the major aspects today required for the global scenario. And good timings. You should have a very good timing that something has happened. Yes, let me do something. What these people say. These are some of the very best quotes I could find. One sometimes finds what one is not looking for. This is exactly serendipity. And the person who was a serendipitous experienced man has himself told 
for the birth of something new there has to be happening mutants so an apple fall james watt watched the cattle boil ranjan forged some photographic plates and these people knew enough to translate ordinary happenings into something new yes luck will favor serendipity will happen but you should have presence of mind you should have the background knowledge to convert that serendipity into an invention and that invention into a global service in completing one discovery we never fail and even if we fail to get an imperfect knowledge of others you will fail in a discovery or an invention but you will come up with 10 different ideas but the only thing is when we come up with 10 different ideas we focus on that failure and we don't move ahead but if we take those 10 new ideas and move ahead i am sure that something new will come and we could change the term from serendipity to repurposing you do not know what you will find you may set out to find one thing and end up discovering something entirely different over here among these four beautiful quotes i have taken most from sir flynn two more important things over here in the field of observation chance favors a prepared mind louis pasteur has elaborated on it very well success in three parts is hard work but this serendipity is a direct result of other three parts of hard work so friends during this pandemic when we were at home we were just worrying about the things that are going to happen what is going to happen is happening but i wanted you to take a new direction in thinking this is nothing science this is nothing very big but all these things are available on internet and i can tell you that if you google on this information you can get at least 200 to 300 such serendipitous inventions and discoveries and why i am insisting you to do because a compilation of all this can help grow our students bring confidence in them even bring confidence in small children at our home so friends my urge my message today is to make all aware about this term serendipity serendipitous friends the references that i have used are these three very beautiful links on which more than 40 serendipitous discoveries and inventions are given and images are taken from google thank you once again i am thankful to the organizers for this ample opportunity friends i am again wishing you all to recover very soon from this pandemic global scenario of covid-19 you can send me your feedbacks and queries on the number and the email id flashed you can visit my youtube channel for such more interesting videos i am thankful to the organizers once again for giving me this opportunity to be with you all thank you